Hey everyone, my name is Keshav and I'm the producer for this episode. Today's conversation is with Bryce Cross, who is a 2018 Dalhousie University graduate. Bryce began his career with Deloitte in the risk advisory practice in Halifax and completed his CPA capstones and CV in the initial stages of COVID-19. And he joined Sam to discuss his perspective as a Dal teaching assistant, content developer for courses, and tutor, uh, along with a student, uh, what it's like to be on both sides of that transition into online school, and also how he was able to, to leave his job at Deloitte during COVID to become an independent consultant. It's a really interesting conversation. Uh, Bryce is really energetic and has a lot of really great things to say. I've linked his info in the description and Sam's info as well. So feel free to connect with Bryce if you'd like, and I'm sure he'd be happy to, to chat with you. Thanks very much and enjoy. Boom, and we're live, Bryce. Oh. Glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll introduce you in a second. I'm really glad to have you here too. Uh, we're gonna start off with a surprise question. So um, what do you think my favorite swear word is? <laughs> How many times have I heard you say a curse word? <laughs> Not all that many. Well, I like hearing that because I don't swear with my students. So like that's the professional line. But with my colleagues, uh, I tend to drop a few, a few swear words here and there when I'm excited, <laughs> when I'm angry, when I'm frustrated, when I'm sleepy, <laughs> not when I'm hungry. Uh, so I thought I'd throw this question at you as like a legit total surprise to loosen this up a little bit. I've given you a timers to, to think about it. What do you think it is? My favorite swear word. I gotta say it's the F word. I Absolutely. would say. I think yes. so. Yeah, it's, it's the F word. But yeah. I was I, thinking if about I were it, to go like, for I, like the one that I'm mo my like go to. And I feel like there's a yeah. comedic bit about it, about why it's just so versatile. So yeah, yeah, it's just, you know, you can use it, you can conjugate it however you'd like, and it can be, it can be good. It can be bad. It can be everything yeah. in between. And you can mask it. So you can say F. And yeah. people know what you're what you're saying, yeah. what you're thinking, and you can still slide it by. So, all right, uh, now that we're into this, uh, maybe that'll be <laughs> a bonus gonna... question to my students on a test someday. What is okay. Samantha's favorite swear word? <laughs> yeah, one and one and a half points. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, tell me what you're doing, where you're at, where have you been, uh, where'd you come from, where are you going? Uh, so, but the long and the short of it, not not all that. Let's start off with. Um, have I ever been your teacher, your no. prof? No, 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 no. We've never taken, no, no. We've no. never, I've never taken a class with you. Nope. Where, so how did we get to know each other? We took consolidations together, <laughs> although you weren't really a registered student in the class, I would say. No, um, uh, in fact, I was, um, I was set to replace a legend, uh yes. in and i wouldn't say replace i would say teach her courses <laughs> um, yeah that's a, she, and, and, and legend so, is not used lightly there that's like she's like a legend she's a legit of. canadian um and if not like international uh, she's a 3m scholar she's been teaching consolidations for 25 years and they legit wrote it into part of my paid compensation to sit there and audit her class and i am um, when they brought it up, um, and it, it was posed to me as an option, and I jumped at it. I was like, wait a minute. I am getting paid to learn and to, to really not learn the material so much as learn how to deliver it and essentially get a master class um, in education from a legend. I was like, absolutely. Like, who would, who would not take this opportunity? Who would do it? Yeah. Yeah. So you were in the class taking it as a student, as a fourth year Dow student. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you were like, well, who the heck is this person? Uh, That's true. We were all like, who's this person sitting in the corner with a, a laptop and like a Contigo and like. <laughs> Yeah, I was at the corner. I'm pretty sure I was front row center because I was like geeked out and yeah, hot. you were like off the yes. yeah, 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 just yeah, fair, yeah. You, front you were, row, near, you were near the table that the homework got handed in, so you had a a little bit of a you were out of place because no one wants to be the first one in the homework. <laughs> <laughs> that was very true. And then, uh, when was the first time that we worked together? Do you recall? Shortly after I finished school, I guess that no, was no, it was even sooner. Marking intro, I want to say managerial yeah. exams. Yeah. yeah. So Tammy, it was even slightly before then. So Tammy's like, hey, uh, I was putting on my first midterm and for intro uh, managerial, and she's like, oh, do you need like 
somebody to help uh, invigilate. I was like, sure. And she's like, Bryce is awesome. And I was like, okay. And then you very kindly, um, ha- when you just, you took charge, which I loved because it was great because midterms are crazy. And you started handing them out. You saw that there's different colors and you just, you know, you were respectful. Like you didn't come in and like, you know, but like you got shit done. And I really appreciated that. And then, um, cause for I myself, like I didn't teach actually, university. Yeah. yeah. I didn't teach university before coming to Dal. I was, you know, all in with this, uh, with CPA education. So when the midterms were out, I had this moment, like, Oh my goodness. How do we get them back? <laughs> yes, I remember. I do remember that you approached me and it was, you were like, what do we do at the end? And I was like, pencils down and we pick up the exam like you, you know, but, but you were like oh but like do they bring them to you or do you go get them and it was like it was like, like it, I think we ended up doing like everybody passed them to the left and then I just yeah. grabbed them all in the middle yeah 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 and then I think you said be careful for the runners <laughs> I was like what and yes, like, be some careful for the runners. <laughs> so it was great and so you were very kind you did not uh, you were not condescending at all and that is when um because I truly truly believe that there's a continuum of learner and educator and we're all on it. And sometimes, sometimes we're swapped. <laughs> I've forgotten I, that one entirely. I didn't remember that at all until that now. Was, that was, that was pretty funny. Yeah, Cause I remember you were like, yeah, like, what do I do? <laughs> and you're like, this is your class. How did you, I think <laughs> like, you told me your, later, you're, you're like, the, how did you the get teacher. this job? And I was like, well, there was no <laughs> test for like, can you give tests? It was like, yeah. do you know the shit and can you teach it? <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yes. would have failed that last part. <laughs> like, um, yeah. <laughs> or I would have like pencils down. Bye. <laughs> yeah, like everyone leave. There's a fire. <laughs> uh, so I'm glad you buried it deep because we that was in January or like February or whatever February of 2018, and now we're sitting here at like legit three years later, and a lot of time has passed. So what have yeah. you done? Your fourth year counting a Dell. And so that means you would have graduated um, in April, April, May of 2018. Mm-hmm. What have you been doing since then as a Dal accounting grad? Ooh, so too many things, I feel, but a lot of things. And it's been a lot of fun. Basically, my full-time job was, you know, working at Deloitte in, in risk consulting. And I put on, I had a lot of hats there. Um, a lot of it ended up being, you know, very related to, to the accounting and some of it was not at all related to the accounting I did in school. At the same time, I was basically hustling as hard as I could to, um, you know, get anything together, basically in education. So I was like TAing basically anything I could, grading anything I could, um, you know, making assignments. I was tutoring, I was doing exam prep sessions, making booklets. Um, I worked a little bit with the profession throughout that time. Um, in a couple different capacities like CPA Canada. Um, and then I left the firm recently in October. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just want to make sure that we get a full picture of the hustle. Okay. So in, when did you start your first um, CPA module? Because you took the modules through Pat, correct? Oh, yes. I totally forgot that I got a CPA. Um, I, yeah, so it's, so I started in PEP in October, 2018. So you would have done that whole summer and you were probably hustling during that summer, doing finance, tutoring, and possibly some other things. That's right. You start core one in the fall. And was that when you started doing the CPA way questions for me for IFA two? I think you developed a number of questions. Shortly after that, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So you're working at Deloitte, doing core one. Um, joining my team as content development. Um, Mm -hmm. and then, so kind of doing, doing everything. So when people are like, oh, I can either do this or this, it's like, well, why not do and right. And you had, I I do believe you had some social life in there at some point. I, I did. Yeah. I managed to somehow fit in right after graduating a few weeks abroad with my, my girlfriend at the time. And, um, yeah, no, it was, it was, as long as I basically, I found so long as I worked for nine to five, (laughs) that there was still room for a social life most of the time, pretty much. Hey, was that the girlfriend that I, uh, I met in the elevator? Yes, that would have, yeah. She, she was awesome. I love, absolutely loved her. Um, (sighs) in the elevator at the row, she asked if I was a student there and I was so delighted I didn't and, remember that either. I remember that now. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then what did she say? 
I don't I, remember. Oh, she's like, oh, because we have some really old students sometimes. <laughs> oh. Emma just turned right around. You start, it's like a roller coaster. You were so good. Oh. So good. Yeah, and so down. And I, I just want to be like, oh, were you graduating? Were you supposed to be graduating in May? <laughs> no. Oh, it was good. I really liked it. That was uh, one of those moments. So I actually came up like a year later when mm -hmm. I ran into one of my students in the SOP. And then um, his friend was there and was like, wait a minute, is that your prof? And then so later I was talking to my student, I was like, I was like, you can't, I'm like, did he just think I was a really old student? He's like, no, he thought you were a regular age student. I was like, good. Good, good. <laughs> so that's the memory that goes down. There you go, there you Anyways, go. Anyways, it's a funny one um, because mm -hmm. I was talking to one of my um, colleagues recently that really, um, I'm, a, I'm the year of the tiger and one of my students is also a year of a tiger and she's like next year we will turn 24 together and I was like you know how to play the game good job there you go so, all right so you're hustling you're working you're working hard you mm -hmm. are involving hustle you are not sacrificing a social life because that was that girlfriend there's been others I won't I won't bring any, any more here and uh and you've gone out and had fun and have a group of friends and so I don't it's not about work or work and hustle, hustle, hustle. You really have, an, I don't want to call it balance, but you've, you've done, you've had your eye on the prize and, and multiple kind of wins at the same time. Yes. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd fair? say that's fair. I'd say that's fair. Yeah. Core one, core two and busy season. What would traditionally be busy season for people? Uh, so for us, actually, busy season runs from November to December, basically half of all the revenue for the year would come in. So it was busy. Core one was actually during our busy mm -hmm. season. Okay. Um, core, core two, I took earlier than most because there's two offerings and the auditors are typically prohibited from taking the, yeah, the, one, winter, in January. Yeah. the one in January because of busy season. Yeah, um, I took that one um, just because I was like, let's let's get this out of the way. It's yeah. the dead of winter. It's the dead of winter. Um, and so cleared that out of the way. And then I didn't resume until later in the summer when they put on the electives. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. So actually I remember you taking core one and the module exam because it was on a new type of software. And so I bring this up because you know, right now students are writing virtual exams online and they feel, yeah. and rightfully so, like this is so different, this has never been done. But, you know, you wrote at a time when they were bringing in new software and there was, you know, there was some good, you know, some transition items and some, you know, nervousness with just different. And so part of, you know, the profession is that it's always changing and evolving and growing and also needing to adapt to different circumstances and different, you know, realities. So you um, said something to me like right before that I was like, yes, like, yes, yes, yes. And I hope that people can pull from strength from this. It was, well, everybody, you know, everybody's gonna be writing the same thing. Like whatever happens could happen to anybody. And I just got to go in there and do my best. And if something bad happens, I really just have to focus on being in the top 80% and it'll probably be okay. Basically. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, sort of you know when you're looking at the issues and how they kind of have been handled is you know like educational institutions aren't really out to get you yeah so yeah. it's like you know I had you know during I think it was core one yeah uh my, my software was fine um I kind of got through it um but it, you had to have it set to a little resolution like this so I had like you know one third of the screen um to use and but you know it was yeah. and that 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 sucked but it was okay. not ideal not ideal, but you got through it. not ideal, but I got through it. Two of the people who were in my cohort who were from the, the from Deloitte, um, they both had a problem and, you know, they, they ended up getting like, it was, you know, extra, an extra 30 minutes was, was applied. And so, that was, that, that was perfectly fine. Like they got stopped for 20 and they got yeah. like 30 or something back. Yeah. So there was measures taken <laughs> to consider the fact, yeah, yeah that it yeah. wasn't yeah. So, you know, it sucks, but it's also just attitude. Like, okay, here, here's where we are. Let's make the best out of this moment and always give it our best um, and just focus forward. Pretty um, much. Um, and then I know like there was the, 
like I was part of this sort of generation where like everybody who went through the CFI when the CFI went really poorly. And for, for any of those watching, there was a little bit of a, there was a kerfuffle, I'll call it, not not this year, but the year before last. So right before COVID. Yeah. So actually let's let's fast forward to there because you took two modules. So you did core one, core two back to back, then took mm-hmm. a little bit of a break, then took you took finance and PM, right? Finance and PM, yeah. Okay. And so what's really cool about that, we won't dig into here, but if people want to talk to you, maybe they can reach out because Absolutely. a Anytime. lot of people are familiar with the tax and assurance. But yep. um hearing your experience in PM and finance would be mm-hmm really cool too and just aligning it with your interests and with your job and more so like your interests Mm -hmm. so then then fast forward and you had done pm and finance and Mm -hmm. you were slated to write um you took capstone one in january and then you were slated to write do capstone two and write the cp in may and then covid hits so you are right in the middle of Capstone One, have to do video presentations for the first time. And you yep. just got to adapt. Like you were planning on presenting yep. in person. And-, and, we, and we had no idea what was going to happen there for a little while because it yeah. was like, so, you know, we start, you start the module in like January something, like 15th, I'll say. And it was done by the end of March. Like I think it was like March 27 was the day that you you get your your little thing back that says yes or no. Yeah, that's, um, that's about right. It's March like 12th. Around, around there, yeah. March 12th is when they shut down the core two workshop, which would have been in week seven when you handed in part three. So literally the next yes. week you would have had to, the next week or two would have been when you yes. submit or do your presentation. So you're so in the like, middle of compiling that big report and figuring out your presentation and then the world starts shutting down and it got even worse for us and like my team because like when they put out um the first thing that said look you're going to do a video they didn't specify if it meant you guys are just going to gather and make your video because at that point like covid was so new there was no restrictions yet nothing was closed yet But, but they were starting to say private organizations should start voluntarily so we didn't have one. And then I, that week, actually, my girlfriend got the, the flu. Um, so it was a really bad time to have the flu. And we'd just been in New Brunswick <clears throat> because of, we took her cat to um, a specialist in Moncton. And th- that was the same day the first case came up in New Brunswick. So we knew that we didn't have COVID, but the rules were like, the you know, immediately. So yeah. I emailed back, you know, to CPA just saying like, look high so like out of an abundance of caution like and I consulted an MD and yeah. they said look you shouldn't you shouldn't be going into a room right now with these other people and like so I and they they, they were fine with that like it was <clears throat> they were like okay no so you can all be individual and that actually brought a host of challenges you've got four people with four cameras filming four angles with different audio kind of and different and I had to stitch it all together and then you have to answer quite they 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 yeah. watch it have questions new videos t- very different so within all of that, did, were you able to, in the moment, in the shit show, were you able to kind of keep an eye on the prize, both the goals and also remembering the bigger picture that CPASBE or Promet, um, that would have been CP Atlantic. CP Atlantic didn't want, doesn't want people to not write caps into and do the CV. So was it yeah, hard yeah. to keep that in mind? Like with all this stress and all this newness that they ultimately want you to do well? Um, how was that? There's definitely like, you're not, totally sure is the like that's where the stress really comes in is you're like look we're like 90 percent sure they're gonna sort us out we're gonna be fine here guys but it's like is somebody gonna be a stickler or are they gonna like because i know that it got released like for our c fee they were like look we can't have this c fee not in person because we have reciprocal agreements with yeah. other countries that prohibit us <clears throat> from doing such a thing yeah. and so it's basically the question was like is some higher bigger power gonna you know but like no it's it's cap one like it was just sort of in the moment stress like we were clearly taken care of by the end um yeah and then so you capstone two is canceled and now you're going to be writing in the summer how is your mindset because throughout all this you're working at deloitte um you're you know racking up your hours and your months um for your cpa designation you're also tutoring and developing courses um you're marking for ae2 for me um, and we're in communication still. Um, I think, oh, you were also involved um, with my cost course at that time. Um, so we're talking, you're doing finance courses and finance development. And all this time, yeah. COVID is, is in full, full force with uh, everything you know, shut down, essentially. 
What was your mindset leading into that summer to take Capstone 2 and prepare for the CP? Were you concerned that it was going to be canceled? I, yeah, I was sort of, because nobody really knew again back then, like in April, by the end of April, that was still where the, the sort of the predominant narrative was like, the world is ending. Um, like financial markets are crashing. Everybody's going out of a job. Um, and I was, I figured it was probably a 50-50. Is I, I was like, look, I, I don't think the odds are any better than that, but I don't know if they're any worse than that. Um, and it's as we were heading into it, like, who, who like, knows? It was like, exact, and it was like, look, like, and like some of the part of the consideration was not even just like health or safety, but it was like, look, like if a bunch of people are getting, you know, um, laid off from their jobs or getting sick or, or is, you know, are they even gonna have the markers, let's say from a logistics perspective, like if a bunch of people, like, you know, if it, if it got as bad as, you know, originally some experts were saying, like, if it was like, yeah. we were expecting a million people at once to have COVID yeah. in Canada, like the, on these crazy projections with these graphs that just go. And so yeah. it was kind of like, look, like, is there going to be a future here where we just can't do this exam for like a year or two yeah. because logistically it can't be put together because the country is still dealing with this. So um, how did you focus on just what you could control? Like, how did, like, what was your mindset? Part of it, it was actually just like, just letting it go <laughs> was, was, it was like, look, like I've got five out of six modules. I'm getting a freaking CPA. Yeah. Like they're going to yeah. give me the letters eventually. I'm finishing this come like hell or high water. It's happening. Yeah. Um, so it was like, look, that's either happening this year or it's happening next year in by like May, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, worst case scenario, everybody's getting slowed down. There's going to yeah. be nobody out there that's, you know, nobody's looking, if they'd canceled it all, nobody would be looking for a 2020 vintage CPA because they wouldn't exist. Yeah. Right. It's, so, you're not being singled out. We're all in it together. Yeah. Just do the best that you can and head down and yeah. know that it will work out. You'll earn your CPA um, this year right. or next year. I like that. I really, and, really and do. We, and we knew that like studying was going to be worse because it, it was, you know, for a lot of people, they like, they go study for their CPA at like the central library, right. Or mm -hmm. they do it, you know, so I knew a bunch of people who actually went back to Dallas campus and, yeah. you know, they weren't students anymore, but they would just sit, yeah, in, no. sit in the stacks to study. Yeah. Um, and so like, that wasn't going to be possible. So for a lot of people in, in the cohort, myself included, it was like, so we're just sitting in our living rooms for nine, eight, nine weeks. Yeah. And that was a challenge because like, it is like, you tell yourself like, oh, we're going to start at 9 a.m., studying I did I did it all with a friend a lot of people do it with like one one or two others um so I was like I'll, I'll we'll do it together and then we didn't really start a lot of the mornings because it was like yeah like it was like well you know we could start studying or like we could play call of duty for two hours um and that definitely wouldn't have happened at the library yeah so, so okay so even though it wasn't textbook ideal situation ideal circumstances yeah. or ideal no offense execution right yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's, you're not going to see that in a CPA like advisor. Oh, two hours yeah. to like f around before you actually start. Um, but so it wasn't textbook anything, and yet um, a fact you wrote uh, the CV in September and late November you you were notified that uh, you had passed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. So it all turned out okay. All the modules turned out okay. Basically, everything turned out okay. Yeah. Um, the thing I ended up most worried about was my questions for my skills that you have to submit, basically. Um, <laughs> for your, uh, that for your designation. Yeah, yeah. I was worried that some of my examples were too far from what a CPA would do, um, that they would be like, well, wait a minute, kid, you're not, you're not, you're not doing anything over here. Like, you know, go, you go do something else, you know? Just because um, it wasn't necessarily the traditional, you know, or what we deem to be traditional. Basically. Yeah. yeah. That would more, Yeah. Okay, so here we are. You passed in November, December. Um, you um, and when did you become a designate? When did you become a CPA? When did you email me with those new shiny letters behind your name? It was, was that January or February fourteenth? I think it was. It's been almost no. It's been almost a month. Yeah, it's been almost I don't, a month. Yeah, so it's let's almost say, a month. Yeah. Yeah, end of January ish. Um, so yeah. congratulations. Um, yeah. Dalbrad. I emailed a bunch of people with just my signature that says Bryce Cross comma CPA. It was, uh, <laughs> no, I loved it. And I still do. And I still do because 
Uh, it's been a cool journey. It's been, um, you know, in a number of different ways. Um, I was starting a DAO as you were leaving and you've helped develop um, my courses. Uh, you've helped, um, you know, Mark, you've been definitely that, that voice, uh, you as well as uh, Nicole Porkham, so recent Dell grad, um, when we transitioned online to make sure that we, because let's face it, I've been in education for over a decade um, with accounting education. So I realized that what I deem to be easy or what I deem to be you know, appropriate, I, I need to incorporate um, other opinions, right? Because it, mm -hmm. it should relatively be easy. And it's for me, right? And my mm -hmm. barometer is not your barometer. So what I love about um, you this entire time and Nicole this summer for IFA2 and for cost and for AA2 is having that two-way street to ensure, you know, I know at my end what needs to be there and you know at your end what needs to be there. And, but you also have, you and Nicole have the empathy of, um, you know, what it feels like recently to be a learner and to you know you just communicated the unknowns and like we're, we're pretty sure like sam's not out to get us or cpa is not out to get us or you know we're pretty <laughs> sure that you know x educator right x educator is yeah. not out to get us but then how do we make sure that we communicate that and how do we make sure that we structure the course in such a way so from from your, your perspective you've seen this entire year going virtual um what are your thoughts with with the whole before, during, and after, and how how accounting um, in DAO leads to preparation and execution of the CPA, if that's where somebody so chooses to take themselves. So I guess it's sort of everyone, like students, the faculty, me, everybody, basically, I guess should always be mindful when we're thinking about the transition online that this was... This was not a project that coalesced with, you know, sponsorship that started two years ago. So, you know, a careful budgeting process on a strategic plan that was years long, you know, with implementation partners and so on and so forth in a, a regular market. It all happened in a, you know, what was that five, six week period with implementation partners who were fully booked. I'm sure every educational, you know, education company that deals in technology solutions was, had the phone ringing off the hook. Every university was doing this. Absolutely everyone had to get everything done real quick. Mm -hmm. the, way, the way that that's ended up looking, of course, you know, it differs a lot based upon, and I've heard stories from, you know, people in commerce as well as other programs, arts, even geography. Um, and what the sort of, take like takeaway for me that it looked like was that the business school was better prepared to move basically it and, and that might be for any number of reasons I'm not I'm not saying it's because they're like let's say better than anybody else but it might just be because the material sort of or or, or the textbooks or that the tools that were available were already a little bit more developed and, and ready for that kind of deployment um it's and and like it's you know it, it's been a long time educational model that people come into a classroom, they sit down and they wait for somebody at the front to talk for a while and just to sort of explain stuff. And there's a, and you'll find that those traditions, I think, are still very active in some parts of the university. If you go down to the James Dunn building right near the LSC and you sit down in one of their lecture halls, there's still literal blackboards at the bottom. They don't have whiteboards. Um, and the, pro the, the project, yeah, it's still chalk. The projectors aren't used. And it's because physics and mathematics professors teach with chalk. Um, and they don't have... They don't usually have a lot of slides. I mean, one of the guys there when I was there, he was when he was teaching calculus, he still had an overhead machine with a plastic film um, with a little dry erase marker. And he would, you know, he would do, he would put the questions up on that on an overhead, and then he would use chalkboard literally. And it's I hated the sound of it. Um, it was terrible. It was one of the reasons that I left the class among others, was I didn't like the chalkboard. <laughs> And let me just clarify, we're not throwing shade on any other no, no, and we're certainly not, or no, teaching it, method. It, absolutely well, not. No, no, no. You're just, because, no, no, you're just saying that like the way that we've already been doing this in yeah. business. Uh, it, so it, I travel, yeah. I travel. It's part of the culture. And, yeah, it's yeah. a different culture. It's different like priming. A bunch of us have different backgrounds that are used to mm -hmm. that. And I used to travel um, for work um, and do some long weekends or leave on a Friday and come back on the red eye Sunday night to teach on Monday. 
-hmm. And I always had to have a, like a plan B for my lectures, right? So, you know, what if I get delayed in Calgary or what if I get delayed in Toronto? What are the plan Bs with videos or, you know, self-paced Nearpods or, you know, and having these things so that, you know, school can still go on, but I can also still be involved in the profession because that's likely where my strength really lies right now is that yeah. tie in with the profession. I know where 90% of our Dow grads are going and I tweak and adjust to ensure that the for, like what we teach isn't any more difficult, but the format, you know, the CPA way questions in IFA two that we worked on, you know, the delivery of it is consistent with where they yeah. need to be. So they don't need to relearn stuff in core yeah. one. So I, I think, I think a big part of the takeaway too, is like from this transition is that it's, it's not going to, it's not negatively going to affect, I think people's like careers, like the, you know, the big four firms, the big banks, the small firms, everybody is still going to be coming and doing hiring out of all of the classes. Um, you know, whether that's a 2018 graduating year, 2019, 2020, 21, 22, whatever it is, um, they'll keep at that. And the sort of learning environment now is actually much more similar to what you would do in CPA, regardless of COVID, um, because it all happens on Brightspace and there is no in-class component except for your workshop. Yeah. And that's two days and CPA specifically prohibits technical teaching yeah. in those workshops. They can't say like, this is how you do the journal entry for, um, you know, some like that, that's not yeah. going to be what's no, it's taught very because true. CPA and says, don't do that. They say, um, don't do that. And they say, this is an exam prep. And people are like, why are we here? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is that they're like, they're teaching all these enabling skills and, and going over like cases and all this stuff. And like, that's what you get in the in-person. It's, it's actually a lot closer to what a seminar would look like over in, let's say an arts degree. Um, yeah. Once you're in those workshops and you kind of get like, that so seminar. what they see in the modules is really close to what they're seeing online now. Yeah, so, literally. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it's all, it's all on Brightspace. The quizzes are on Brightspace. Like it's, it's except for your actual exam. It's all on Brightspace. It's actually kind of funny because I, so I, I'm involved with uh, policy for the West and I'll go and answer some questions over there and then I'll come back and I'll look at my course and I'm like, you know, it's just, it's funny. I have to put a different picture of me up there. One's in black yeah. and white, one's in color so that I don't accidentally like just my, do, you know, you my accidentally do the wrong region. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. do they, wait, not, do they, do they, do they just, use I'm like, oh, this is Dow. Huh? space is the whole country, right? Like Atlantic. Uh, it depends. They all use... So okay. in Capstone 2, um, everybody's in the same cohort. So everything is kind of combined. Mm. And so my role at CPA Canada, I see everything. And then my role at CPA West, I see everything for West. So I actually have different logins for that in different pictures as well. So there's Brightspace for Dal that has a picture, Brightspace for CPA Canada for me that has a different picture, and then Brightspace for CPA West, just to kind of okay. keep it all straight. Just, but they all work together. Just, wanna, so. just wanted to make sure I was telling everybody that they're going to be on Brightspace for their CPA, and then they go out West, and suddenly they're on yeah. like some other. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, um, the way that it's, it works for the modules is they're nationally developed nationally, and then regionally okay. delivered. So mm -hmm. like we had some students, some former students that did one of these um, recording uh, recordings that did um, some modules in Ontario and then transferred to Atlantic and they transferred. And she's like, oh, like it's the same platform, yeah. the same, um, uh, the same delivery, just different delivery people. Right. Yeah. So same platform. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, to anybody who says, you know, hey, because we, I don't know, I, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but we spent a significant amount of time, yourself, um, me, and uh, Nicole Corkum, okay. developing cost AA2 and IFA2 specifically for online, specifically um, to give the best bang for the buck um, to, our, to our students, but in a way that more was not more. Yeah. So... Um, we redeveloped the skeleton, we redeveloped, um, we incorporated uh, the, the topics, making sure we didn't teach more than what was required of CPA. And then within that, uh, making sure that we focused on small mini lecture videos. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, as we've talked about, I believe before, the attention span for videos that people like and people want to watch voluntarily is six minutes. Yeah. So trying to keep into those little mini things with the reinforcing active learning part of examples and MCQs. So, you know, I don't want to, again, 
I don't, I'm obviously very biased. Uh, and you do, um, you have pushed back and you do contribute um, in ways that I don't ask for. And that's why I like working with you. And that's why I like working with Nicole is it's not about ego. It's like you guys have way more to offer in so many aspects. And that's why it is truly a team partnership. So I guess, what would you say to very fair criticism to a student who like, you can still remember being a student, being a learner, being in that place that's like 90% trusting, 10% skeptical. What would you say to that student who's sitting in my class, say in cost or AA2, and who's wondering, oh, I'm getting the short end of the stick because this is online. What would you say to them? So I remember, I think it was when you, when you first sort of called me about doing development basically again um for because like it was it needed to basically be beefed up yeah because of covid um i like think stripped it, down and rebuilt, literally yeah. like rebuilt was the 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 overriding principle that it was like this is like this is supposed this is going to be good first of all yeah. but it's also going to be basically in, inclusive of the people who want to do this a different way um and that to me made makes a lot of sense because like there's you know 15 different ways you know, just throwing a random number out there that you can learn something, right? Yeah. Um, and it's like, you know, for, so, so if I'm sitting in the classroom right now, I'm looking at it and it's like, if, if you're kind of like me, um, who is uh, an absolute diehard for textbooks, um, I am the, the kind of person who did go to all my classes and did contribute, but in a lot of those classes was not paying attention a lot of the time because I knew it was just something I was going to read the textbook on later. And that like that worked for me. It certainly didn't for a lot of other people, but I was a diet for textbook. But what you can, there's also, um, you know, you don't have to do that. If you just, if you're the kind of person that just wants to see lecture videos, that's how you do best. They're there. If you want them to be shorter because you find it difficult and you only want the, the basics, that's what the shorter videos are for. Uh, you know, I've got some of my own students who just want me to stand up and do problems all day. They like to see repetition and they like to learn by pattern recognition. Um, you know, how do problems get solved? There's tutorial videos if you want to watch all of those. Um, you know, there's all of the online stuff provided by the publishers, I think, for practice. And the yeah, other so IFH2 and AA2 have has the uh, 10% allocated to the pre-work yeah. because if you hop right into the mini videos um, it's it you know you need to yeah. have some of that active reading that active yeah. so even if it is um, where you get into the smart book pre-work mm -hmm. and you get an answer wrong and then you do it right away and get it right that's learning yeah. like yeah. that's oh, I think absolutely. People, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what people do not often understand or think they're like oh I tricked Sam and it's like no 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 <laughs> the joke's on you or like on all of us because like we're tricking each other into you learning yeah. right yeah and then so. and it, it's all it's all part of the I'll call it like the evolution of education that you know if you want to go all the way back it's like there used to be one room school houses and then not so much and then eventually you know you got to a point of sort of modern history where people were you know, where it's like more than 30% of everybody goes to university kind of thing and gets a degree. And like, I remember there was, there was a story my mom told me actually about her time at McGill. She did a BCom and graduated in 1982, um, was that for like classes before exams and like papers and stuff, there were students who would, because this was well before the internet, you couldn't Google anything. Like you were going to the library to get a book. Um, and there's a Dewey Decimal System, right, for, for organizing, you know, so you'd get a little card and you'd go to the, the, the shelf that was numbered accordingly, um, is that students would go through, you know, find all the cards for the textbooks and materials for like an assignment or an exam, and then they would go and check all of those books and materials out of the library so that nobody else could use them. Um, and the idea is they would get an A and then everybody else gets like a, a D, right, because you can't just Google you yeah, know they, like, they hoarded all the materials you, you, you either had to go find another university library you had to go down to concordia right or UD, udm <laughs> and and so and, and like that that's that's ancient history now. that's 40 years ago basically and now it's like there is absolutely everything and while we can't do absolutely everything like there's there's always going to be tools available out there that we haven't deployed mm -hmm. um and it, it will, it might vary from year to year to see what's best and what's working because it's sort of an iterative process, developing a course and making it good for, for, for everybody, including the future students. Yeah. Um, and also like 
the endpoint changes. So if CPA changes, yeah, we're going to yeah. adapt to make There's sure. There's going to be evolution. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but all of those tools are like, they are, they're the best of the tools that you can buy. Like Dow's got the best ones that money can buy. And, um, you know, the, the, the textbooks that are being used are very high quality. Some of them are into their like 11th, 12th edition. They have been seen by dozens and dozens of experienced professionals who have made contributions or helped edit or been used mm -hmm. as just reference material, um, cited somehow. Uh, so like all of the material only gets better year to year. Um, I would hazard to say that like my mom or dad would probably kill to have um, Google, like <laughs> in, yeah. in a short way of saying it, like just any online presence um, or like, you know, a, a bright space or like a, like an e-textbook, like my dad, you cannot yeah. separate my dad from his Kindle now. It's impossible. He's got his Kindle all day long. And I... I'm sure his medical textbooks would have been on a Kindle if he could have done it. <laughs> yeah. I would have killed for a smart book. Yeah, no, it's just the number. I remember even, you know, like when I started school, it was 2013 because I, I really took the long way around in, in university. You were uh, thorough. I was, I was thorough, sure. <laughs> I was thorough. Um, and I literally do, it was, this was not even that long ago. Like this is eight years ago now. They didn't, like now it's a default. Every single textbook, you get a copy of the e-textbook. Like yeah. you get a little card. That wasn't the case. If you went to the bookstore, my introductory macroeconomics textbook, it was just a book. And I had to remember I was flying to like to California because my parents booked like a place or something in Palm Springs and, and wanted me to go with them. And like, I had like five textbooks in my bag and it was terrible. And I would have, I would have killed to have an e-textbook, but it just, they just, even eight years ago, they just weren't, there was some, but they weren't all that common. So I love how you brought up the textbooks and that you even brought them on a vacation. And so I, listen, I take student feedback so seriously uh, and it, it's never going to get get to a point with all the evolution and with all, you know, having done done my background, ha, you know, being involved in the profession in education, uh, doing my master's in education. Like I, I live for, I live for this. Like I, it's what yeah. excites me, what wakes me up. And so um, I try really hard to look at feedback as, as data and as evidence. It's never, and, it's never finished, right? No, it's never finished. I need that feedback. So I, I, I'm so grateful when people take time and, you know, fill out a midterm, you know, hey, how are we doing? Um, but education is also interesting. It's, I find education is a lot like exercise for me. Uh, like I know there's a goal and I know I want to get better at it, but sometimes I am like, I'm in there and 10% of me is like, okay, 90% of me knows this is good for me, but 10% is like, what am I doing here? And is this even going to be worth it? Or why, why are they doing this to me? Or like, can I leave? Or, you know, the pain. Um, they yeah. did a study, one of my colleagues told me about it, that when you change, you physically feel in pain. So I guess I struggle with, you know, being both the dentist, but also, you know, the passionate educator. So when I receive feedback that is amazing and I want to keep receiving it, I don't always know how to respond. For example, the one that I shared with you that said that um, essentially I'm going to have to teach myself from the textbook, um, you know, based on what we've done, based on and what I own, like this is my course and at the end of the day, anything there. Um, mm -hmm. is better because of you and Nicole, but anything that is not good is, is it's a hundred percent on me or, you know what I mean? Um, I, I own absolutely all of it and believe in all of it, but to criticism that, you know, the, oh, the, the lecture videos are mini or, you know, anything like that, that I just have to teach myself through the textbook. What would you say? Cause you can see it from all angles, content developer, educator, and student. I remember there was this time when there was this kid wandering down the fourth floor hall who took consolidations and who didn't understand what to do. Um, and I didn't know this is me, uh, as if you can't tell yet. Um, it was like, I think five or six weeks in to Joan's class. And by the way, the textbook we used back then was not nearly as good as the current one. <laughs> 
it was. And that was, that was, there was a full disclosure from Joan is you remember she handed out the public publisher's information was like, this is the textbook, by the way, it's crap. Um, and, and, and she, and, and we were like, well, what do you mean? It's like, well, you, the kid, you're in advanced accounting. Now there's like four people qualified in this country to write and edit a textbook on this subject. It was actually funny because she's like, this is the textbook I'm using. This is the textbook you'll be using next year. Yeah. And which is the one that we presently use. Like Joan yeah. was full out like this one yeah. um, is what you'll be using. It's not like it wasn't available right, right when your yeah. class started, but she made sure to get it. So it's just hilarious yeah. that you should, it's hilarious that she said it to you guys and that you guys still remember it. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. But I, but, but I was, so I was, I was wondering this all and I arrived at the office of Samantha Taylor, who at the time I didn't know really at all. Um, but I was just like, this is a CPA. She's supposed to know this. Um, and like walk into your office and there was a moment there after like 15 minutes where I was like, she is almost as clueless as I am about this right now, <laughs> but she is still really going at this. And I think I stayed there for like an hour almost. It was a long time, but eventually we did actually come to the right answer. And yeah. like my balance, she balanced. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> like, and, but like, you weren't, you weren't even my prof at that point. Um, so I guess like my answer is sort of like, you're not teaching yourself out of a textbook, um, is, is kind of the way to say it when you could, you can get an hour basically of Sam's time. I, and before, and, and Sam's sitting there right now and she's just like, wow, Bryce is now filling my schedule. Why are you doing this? Please, to me, no, 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 I'm, no. I'm like, I'm like, continue <laughs> I'm with the story. Just, I like where just, this is going. I'm just joking. So, no, 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 keep going. If, if, you, if you are, if you're out there and you're feeling stranded and you feel like you're teaching yourself, that's perfectly okay. Um, it's okay to, to, and, and honestly, it's okay to be frustrated. And if you would like to sit in silence and, and curse the heavens or curse me or curse Sam, that's perfectly okay. Um, and I honestly, I empathize with that. I, you know, I empathize with that too. Yeah. Like there was tons of times when I was in school where it was just like, oh my God, like X, Y, Z is making us do this work. And like, I just, I just want to, you know, and, and that's the, like, if you go, go for it, you know, um, curse Bye. my name to the heavens all day long, but book an hour. If yeah. you don't, if you don't, if you, if you're legitimately feeling like you are teaching yourself, you know, variance analysis, why not, you know, Sam will help you with it. If you just go and ask. Yeah. Um, I have so, Conley. Yeah. There you go. Like just, you know, like go and the book, right students. book five or 10 of them if you really want. <laughs> like, you, yeah. like there's, there's no rule that says you can't. <laughs> so uh, like, and, and as well, it's like, I, I mean, if, if, Before if we get thinking, too far, though, I do want to defend yeah, myself. A, yeah. you called, like, you bring me your half assignment, which is great, but it's like, you plunk me in the middle of it. I have no, I haven't read Joan's assignment. I am, I'm basically trying to, like, figure out how to teach this course, not necessarily looking at the material, like, but more like, oh, how is she interacting yeah. with it? How is she, like, delving it out he brings you bring me this like piece of paper where there's maybe five right numbers 20 wrong numbers in the middle yeah, of it and, yeah. and i have no idea what the question even is and you're like hey what's this and i was like oh and i'm yeah. pretty sure i start off with like i have no idea like what chapter yeah. you're on what assignment this is where you're even at how far you're at and i was like but let's figure it out so we unwound that and yeah we, yeah. we learn together we like co-learn and we bounce back and forth and i was like yeah. oh have you thought about this and you're probably like yes it's there and there and there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, and, and this was this was at a time when too when I like I still I still and a lot I think a lot of people go through this. You think that if someone has the letters CPA behind their name that they know like everything about accounting. They know everything <laughs> and they can start in the middle, go to the yeah. end, and then retrace to the yeah. beginning. <laughs> I was like, well, you're no. you're trustworthy, but like no, <laughs> now I know. Like if someone walks up to me and they're like, what happens if to the tax status of this transaction well, between a for-profit entity owned by like, a non-profit? I'm like, even if it was a first year and they brought you in like their chart of accounts and like all their journal entries for like depreciation yeah. like something you can do in your sleep you're just kind of like oh my gosh yeah. so I just I had to defend myself but yeah, I want the point to go through and I do I want my office hours to book up I friggin love that um and oftentimes I they book up and then I make more yeah. like okay what else what other time can I do and if something somebody emails me and they're like hey hey you don't have any office hours and I was like oh sweet like you know they just booked up or something um or they're like oh I have class at the time I'm like yeah. cool like what works for you let's figure it out let's make it mm -hmm. work because 
I am here for this. I moved my yep. ass across the country. I start, you know, like I, I am here for this. I did grad school for this. I read through feedback. I skim the nice comments, focus on the constructive ones. Mm -hmm. And then um, I build my future plans based on both. I now am a better educator because I read every and you're, comment. And you're, you're, just, sort of mi you're sort of minimizing it too, is that there's this huge block between uh, we, have, we have to teach X to I'm teaching X, which is the university curriculum, like area coordinators, meetings, discussion, talks with publishers about which book, reviewing multiple books, like reviewing their tools and their platforms, building relationships with their with their, the people who are coordinators for them, who set up access for TAs, for graders, yeah. who, 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 who troubleshoot. Um, you know, there's even the IT folks at Dow and it's like, how do we link Brightspace? To this? And then there's all of the rubrics that have to be created and loaded up. And it just like, it's, yeah, uh, you know, so I, just want, I just want all the viewers to know, I just want all the viewers to know that there's a huge vertical there, basically, that's there's missing a lot of people that because are working. Sam is being, because Sam is being humble. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, they deserve it, though. They deserve, they're paying good money for this education. Um, and even more than that, they're putting their time in trust and they deserve mm -hmm. that. I, I make sure, um, naturally, I'm just friends with these people from CPA, but I also make sure um, to reach out to my colleagues who teach the same classes at top universities across the country. Some mm -hmm. have been doing it for five years. Some of them have been doing it for 25 years. I reach yep. out and I, I show them my things. Um, I show them what I'm doing. I ask what they're doing. I want this to be better. Be and yep. I'm really proud of the product that we have. And I'm really friggin' happy when I have meeting invites pop in my calendar um, from recent grads, from people halfway through the CPA program, from people who just passed. I had my first group of people pass um, in uh, with writing with you. Like this, these are the wins. Um, I want to win now and I want people to feel supported now. And I want to hear those emails like later, like that, you know, hey, smarter, not harder. Oh my gosh, thank you for not teaching me note disclosures for you know two weeks to memorize when I, all i need to do is able to think about the why so you know thank yep. you for for bragging on me for a moment um oh yeah and i like, really do appreciate it and not not just to make me feel good i just want learners to know that like <sighs> what we're doing to them it's it's for their own good regardless if they go into cpa regardless if they you know, um, go on to any other types of learning. Like this is how you can get fluent and comfortable in the language of business. Because when you see a number later on, I want you to speak to it with confidence. And if it's not, I know what this means now, I want you to have confidence. I can go away and come back and, you know, communicate this. And, and here's the, I am not a, a professional accountant by, by really any definition. And even though I'm not like, if you're an auditor, obviously you're going to use everything that you've, you've been taught because that's, you know, but when you were, I was just, I was a consultant. Um, and while I did do some very directly accounting work, like I would test some controls, um, like most of my job was advisory stuff. And like, even in that, like, you know, I did an HR benefits and payroll review for a large publicly listed company. When I went <laughs> right. in. And you're like, TV. Yeah, I just, I walked right in and it was like, the pension is in an underfunded status. It's in that liability status. And I was immediately able to go, that's basically everybody. And I know the seven, I know that every, that's for every company. Um, and I know the seven things basically that go into that. And I can tell you probably why it's sitting in a net liability position. That's not another avenue that we as consultants have to look at. Yeah. Um, and like, if you like, give me one report from an actuary, I'll take a very brief look at it. I'll skim it. And then we'll say, there's no problem here. And we'll move on to another area. Um, I did, you know, I have done governance work um, where, uh, in fact, I'm, I'm on a piece of governance work right now with a CMC, a certified management consultant. It's an MBA, not a, she's got an MBA, not a CPA. Um, and literally not two hours before this, I was on the phone and we're looking at a set of financials for a nonprofit. And she's like, why is there um, a, a, a repeating entry related to a capital asset? And I was literally like, well, it's because of the way that matching happens to the expense um, is, is that's why you're seeing over multiple years, why it looks like this thing is continuously being purchased. It's no, it's because it was back here, right? So stuff like Love that it. is basically every single class I have used 
um, even outside of being an accountant, which is like really weird. I never thought that would happen. But it's, like my first week on the job, I had to know consolidations material. Like I, I was literally like, I'm never going to use More frequently than I would have thought um, yeah. with these themes. Uh, and some people, like one uh, student said, well, it was really neat because consolidating 168 entities was based on the same principles as consolidating two. The spreadsheet was just bigger, and it was it was really cool. Like a spreadsheet, or they're like, or I mean, software. But yeah. I knew how the software oh, was yeah. working, and I knew how to fix the software because of it. So thank you. Without getting into specific details with the CPA Canada project you're working on, just because um, that has some <laughs> goodies that ha are are not yep. disclosed yet. Yep. Um, so without disclosing that, you passed the CP. Um, did you like what what does your work look like right now so you passed the cp a couple months ago you um became a cpa what has kind of um are you still with deloitte no so i decided to be self-employed in yeah. in the middle of a pandemic yeah uh, when did you quit october 16th you quit you quit uh on october 16th and before you found out about your cp results i actually it was it was brutal uh it was my very first day back a partner phoned to welcome me back. And that is when I told him I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it, was, it was, and I gave a lot of notice. It was six weeks yeah. notice, which made it you okay. You gave six weeks. So you weren't mm -hmm. burning any bridges. Your months were up. Um, and so then, like you said, you decided to become a self-employed contractor. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what kind of work have you been working on since your six weeks or possibly while those six weeks were working up, up until now, um, mid mid to late February. What has yeah. kind of your work pattern looked like? I am all over the place. Um, originally, I got, I got exactly. I got engaged to basically be the financial manager of a startup in Toronto from distance, and I got into that. Did that a little bit, um, and eventually sort of came to the conclusion like, look, this isn't going to be a full time job for me. You don't you don't need a designated accountant right now you can call me in two years basically. Um, and, but I still sort of provide some advice. Yeah, and then you provided I advice, you cleaned it up, you got them yeah, uh, on was, the right path, was, like worked through some compliance issues. Yeah, some, there, there was yeah. a lot of things where it was like, look guys, like I, I could have helped you a lot more if I were here a year ago, but in yeah. the absence of that, let's, let's just make sure that all the T's are, are crossed and all the, the I's are dotted here. And so did that. And then I, I worked with another startup based out of Halifax that was also a, a, a similar type of company and developed some of their sort of actual intellectual property and as well just provided some basic sort of financial advice. Uh, and I work for a boutique, which is a strategy and governance boutique and on a, on a contract basis as an associate. And um, that's, you know, governance strategy consulting. So some of what I did previously, and uh, we're now getting into risk as well. And which was my old sort of my alma mater from Deloitte. And uh, as well, I'm working with the profession and I do various things there. Um, and, uh, you know, it mostly falls into, I would say, I would call it curriculum development. Oh, um, yeah, no, absolutely. Like um, that's curriculum what I development, um, the little bit of overlap with IT best practices. Um, yes. uh, also curriculum review and suggestions for improvement and consistency. So there's that yep. like critical aspect there. And that's likely yep. where, likely where I learned um, kind of my approach to the curriculum building the classroom is like always looking at what you're doing and how to make it better. And it always can be better yep. um, and making sure you have the resources on that. Yeah. So a couple so different projects with that. So I've been all over that. And then I had a very interesting phone call yesterday that turned my world upside down. Um, and I might just completely switch careers. So, well, okay. So before <laughs> we're not going to get into that, because maybe we'll need to make a part two, because this yeah. is, this is getting long, but this is really, really good. Um, I just want to ask a few things because um, students will be wondering and recent grads will be wondering, and maybe, yeah. maybe some of your colleagues will be wondering. Um, how did you get into um, consulting? Where do you find your clients? How do you know if you have the skill set to execute? Um, and do you ever feel self-doubt? So, oh, I have a really good story here. Um, I got into Deloitte because I decided to go to a competition that I wasn't even a competitor in. Um, so there was this innovation competition down at the Westin and I was in like first year. And I 
straight up just like was like I don't have anything to do on this Saturday tickets are free so I went because they had some sessions that was like kind of interesting at the time I was like maybe I should start a business and they had like small business accounting and the guy giving it was a Deloitte manager Mm. and at the time I had sort of done some accounting classes and I had um I decided that I liked the idea of doing work in fraud and so I went to Louis Beaubien, who some of you are probably familiar with um, in his capacity at, at Dow. I don't know what his, his title is now, but he's been, he was my prof for intro. I believe he's the Associate Dean of either Research or Research and Innovation. Good for him. Yeah, um, so he runs, he work, does work with the CDL. So, yeah. Excellent. So he was my, my intro prof. And I remember I just walked in like this green and I was like, I'd like to work in fraud. What do I do? And he <laughs> sort of told me, um, well, you know, you go work an internal audit. And then you'll slowly maybe, you know, and so I went to this Deloitte manager who was an auditor and I said, I'd like to work an internal audit because I didn't know what (laughs) audit and internal audit and that they were different. Um, And so he said, look, just come back at like five o'clock and I'll introduce you to someone. So I I came back, met with who would, what, who would later become my manager. And I basically just kept, you know, I met him, they followed up, booked coffee, we had coffee a few months later, another one. Then I started meeting the other people in the team, one of whom was a Dow student. I showed up 40 minutes late to the meeting because of the bus. It was the winter um, and they still liked me. Um, and so it was like, it was, it was literally for me, it was a one and a half year process. Um, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't get interview offers with other firms, um, for at least not the big four. Um, I didn't especially put a lot of work into them. I kind of knew that this was the person that I wanted to work for. Um, but I, it took me a while, but the point sort of here that I'm getting at is I had absolutely no idea who I was going to meet that day. Um, but it was like those random little things that I did, um, you know, like the clubs and the competitions and the, like, just, I just, I filled out my name onto everything I could in school, every basically grant application, scholarship, competition. I put my name on Every I heard this term recently from another um, item and it said increasing the surface area for serendipity. Bam, that is excellent <laughs> because that, that was, yeah, it was, it was like, I was like, oh, like they have people going to China. Like I'll put my name on that. I'll fill that out. Like, oh, there's a Sobe scholarship. I'll apply to that. Oh, there's a trip to Niagara Falls. Oh, I'll apply to that. Um, and I literally all of them, I ended up getting every dollar back basically from Dow that I spent in grants, scholarships, trips, um, paid positions. Um, I got to go out to, um, Hudson tower in New York city to be on the 53rd floor with the CMO of SAP America. Um, and like, that was like, it was like, you know, staying in a a Southern Manhattan hotel, like all covered, like it was like, but all of the best things basically is the moral story. I'm kind of rambling all of the best things that came to me basically right in that sort of ending of my degree and then the last two years they didn't come out of classrooms basically um they came out of doing everything on top of that that lets you sort of exercise what you've learned in that classroom so So, being engaged in the class because like let's not let's not sugarcoat it you did well in class and you applied yourself and you made sure that you had that and so it wasn't an either or it was that and exactly so it was like it was it's like it's like look i need to know how to do costing, right? Even on co-op, it was like, can you build us a financial model? I had to cost a manufacturing facility, even though I'd only taken, you know, intro and cost. Um, so yeah. I costed out an entire manufacturing facility <laughs> and it, okay. it took forever, but okay. so you, you had to know it, but I never would have been able to be sitting in that chair unless I had both done the cl- coursework and then all the yeah. things on top of that. So what would you say, cause I have a few students who either recently graduated um, or maybe are looking to graduate or they're looking at what you did. And if you didn't have the background in um, risk advisory or risk consulting, um, could somebody still quit their job um, and, and be a business consultant or, and be, you know, do work on some of the projects that you're doing? I mean, here's the thing, like it's most, like most consultants are not CPAs, you know, I'd say 97% is the number I'm going to throw out um, that I, you know, I meet and, you know, somebody could go look at, if you want, just go on LinkedIn, look up um, Deloitte Consulting as one term, flip through tons of the people who come up, you'll only see CPA behind a handful of names. Um, And the thing is, here's the thing, if you just want to 
do something different, go for it. Like, yeah. don't let anybody tell you that it's like a bad time because there's always a reason that it's a bad time. Um, and like, like, you know, there's some, you should, you know, it's probably doesn't look good to hop through three jobs in nine months on a resume. Yeah. But the thing is, and like, but the thing is like, if that's something like a risk that you're willing to accept, um, then go for it. Yeah. And like, it's like, I had a friend recently who finished an MBA and he wanted to do like nonprofit, basically consulting, like governance mostly. And I said, like, look, I've done governance consulting for nonprofit organizations. Like, how do you want to get your foot in the door here? And his first idea was, I'm just going to start marketing myself for like literally minimum wage. And I was like, no, no, don't do that. Like, you're not, no, you have a graduate yeah, education. You have an MBA. You yeah. have, you've done work at Ernst & Young. Like, yeah. why are you, what? No, I was like, no, industry custom is you're going to charge like $100 an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, look, don't, don't just start like trying to bid on things. Like, find every boutique in Halifax that has a principal who does this and go on LinkedIn, introduce yourself, say that you are open to being a subcontractor in their book. Yeah. Um, they, they lose nothing until they agree to pay you for something. So it's not like you're on their payroll. You cost them nothing. You like, they're all going to be okay with it. Um, so like, I just, so that's kind of sort of like what I started doing is I just kind of started like applying to companies on angel. Yeah. That's how I found the startup is it's stuff is just, it's just, so, just start, start, start sending messages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of like thinking about doing the thing you want to do, do yeah, the thing sure. that you want to do. Just and do then it. once you yeah. get the opportunity, do yeah. it to your best abilities and be open to, for, for be yeah. open for feedback, right? Like, you are fantastic with both providing me feedback, but also taking it and rolling with it and saying yes. Yeah. And, and it's like, yeah. we all, my one girlfriend, she, um, she works very senior, like high level, um, executive and she's like you know the first six months you're in any job like you're getting she's and she's very experienced she's like you are just relearning it in this context in this business so we're all always learning so the sooner we can get comfortable with like the fact that we're not going to have all the answers the more you can provide the confidence in my opinion at least to say okay let's put ourselves in that area in that place where we can maximize the surface area for serendipity we can start doing the thing that we want to get good at and, you know, putting ourselves out there and saying yes and providing that yeah. value. So, and, and like, and there's, there's, there's like, and you, there's no one that's ever going to say like, there's no authority that comes down from the sky to say like, you are now allowed to say that you're qualified to be a CFO, yeah. or you're now allowed to say that you're qualified to be an instructor. So, you know, yeah. like you could, you just, you, 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 you just, you tell people that you'll do it. And, and then you do it. And then you do it. <laughs> and, you do it. and if you didn't know something, you find out, like, be a decent human being. And anytime, like I tell people, I'm like, if you are at a client and you are freaking the F out, like, just text me, like, go to the bathroom and, and text me. Um, like, I have other instructors who will do this at workshops, you know, they'll put on a brave face and then I'll get like a phone call in the bathroom. And it's cool. Like, we all have, I have those people, right? Like, to you're not you're only as hell I think I called you once for for an assignment where I was like (laughs) yeah I don't know if I know how to do this anymore Sam um yeah it's not good do it um (laughs) and I love it I had office hours with a student a couple weeks ago um starting core one who had his first assignment and was you know like concerned because he's not doing as well as he thought he would be or didn't know how to do it or was spending so much time like we all need people so yeah I mean and I like, I like this. I'm like, you're not, I'm not just your teacher before I teach you or during teaching or, you know, I like the, it's the relationship and, um, you know, Hey, I might call, call on you and ask, Hey, can you spend your Friday afternoon talking with me on a podcast? Um, because I feel <laughs> like people can really connect with your story. Um, cause you're doing, um, what a lot of people think or, you know, what a lot of people want to do or what a lot of people yeah. want to think about, Hey, is this for me? So yeah. I don't know. I'm so curious now. I, and I do ask everybody this because it is something that I feel like we need to, to think about and we all have different answers. So how, Bryce, how this is going to be a surprise? This is going to be a surprise question. Okay, yeah. no, that was okay. No, there's I more surprise questions. Like, what's, what's my second favorite swear word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Um, okay, how um, do I define How do you define success? success? So like, I don't want to do what a lot of people do, which is be like, oh, it's anything you want. But okay. on some level, it's anything you want. But like- There's no wrong answer. This isn't a test. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, so 
for me it's mostly just like look i i don't want to be the ceo of the world i don't want to be the ceo of general electric i don't want to be the ceo of dow do i want to be the ceo of something maybe do i want to be a cfo of something maybe does it really matter sort of what i do eh, like so like and and i guess i've i've told this to a lot of people recently is there is kind of a day and for me it was like right around when i was about to go off on cap 2 because i knew that that was that's the end of your cpa basically is when you get to the end you write your exam you're finished um was i'm sitting in the office and i was like oh shit there's 40 years of this ahead like there's 40 more where i come into an office or or just do something and it's like and you're you, you will make decisions about how much you want to earn, the type of work you want to do, the location you want to be in, how many times a year you want to go on vacation, if you want to own a house or not, if you really want to drive to work or not. And then your partner, the person that you're with, um, is going to make all of those same decisions and you're going to have to make them together. Um, and there's going to be a, always there are trade-offs, unless you're like a, like a billionaire or something, like life has trade-offs. And even if you are a billionaire, life has trade-offs, to be honest. Um, so when you're thinking about success, I'm sure for a lot of students right now, the definition of success is get a job at a big four. That was mine um, when I was in like, you know, second year when I was doing recruitment was um, I need a job at a big four. That's my definition of success. Then I'll be fine. Then when I got there, it changed to, well, I need a CPA and I'd like to finish pretty high up in the cohort. I, I don't, I want to do a good job of it basically like really well. And then it, now that's sort of over and it, it's become, you know, success is uh, I'd like to get a slightly bigger apartment and, um, you know, go on vacation to what's, whatever so-and-so place with my girlfriend. Um, and so I think like, I kind of focus, I think a, a bit, I guess what I'm getting at is on micro success, which is that like, if you're interested in just doing anything at any point in your life, like, and, and that will make you feel like you are successful, then you should do that thing. Um, and if you want to stick to like an overarching 40 year plan that ends with you as president of the United States, that's fine if that's your definition of success. Um, but like, I would say it's like probably focusing on the micro successes, which is like, and, and for a lot of you, especially during COVID and during exam season is, is realistically is getting out of bed um, is probably like a successful day. And then maybe the next day, it's like three hours of study or two hours, whatever your benchmark is, I don't know. Um, and then maybe the next day it's more, maybe the next day it's less. But like you, so long as you're basically satisfied with where you are, I'd guess that that's sort of success. Um, so I guess my answer was all of them and none of them. Um, but like, yeah, focus on, focus on the near term, I would say. And you'll find you're already a lot more successful than you think you are even, I think. Yeah. You'll uh, also find out that they're a lot smarter than they think they are. Yeah, like there's a lot of time. Like I sort of like, I remember I had to go through recently an exercise of basically compiling my life um, for a job application that needs, there There are, turns out that uh, there are some places where you need, you know, 12 plus pages of documents, um, sometimes up to 40 pages of documents about Was it yourself. the Canadian CIA? Was it CSIS? <laughs> no, it was not. No, it, was, it was an education <laughs> institution of all things. <laughs> were there so, thumbprints and blood? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so some of you, some of you may know, some of you, prob most of you probably don't know that, you know, CVs for academics are extremely long. They encompass everything in your <laughs> they life. They should be extremely long. <laughs> fact, this, what I am doing right now, this specific event will end up going on mine um, because it's an invited talk. Um, yeah. And so it, I had to assemble everything. And it's when you're going through that exercise. And if you'd like to do this for yourself in a mini version, pop open your high school transcript, pop open your university transcript, pop open your resume that shows the places that you have worked um, and put them all sort of in front of yourself. And you're probably going to notice an upward trend. Um, and, you know, there's probably a big dip in first year in your first semester. And then it, it comes back up because none of us were very occupied with doing anything um, pedagogical in first year. <laughs> but you'll notice it's probably an upward trend. And you'll look at your job experience and it's like, yeah, like I was the swing manager at that McDonald's, like, and the franchisee really liked me, like, and thought I was really good. And then I was a Dow student. And, you know, then I had to stop school for a little while and go be the manager. And I'm not describing my life, by the way, I'm describing this is a compilation of the lives of my friends is I had one who, you know, um, 
one who you know had to stop school to go serve in the military in South Korea. I had one who had to stop school to go work a management position at a retailer to raise money. One who worked at a bank to raise money um, as a teller. Um, like there were people, and so like lots of different stories. Real life that, happens uh, all while of you those go to people, school. Exactly. Pandemic yeah, of, and otherwise. Yeah, all of those people. Um, like if I look at if I took a look at them when they were fifteen, they would be as as much of a fifteen year old kid as I was, and like it's an upward trend. And so like it's like yeah, like I was even if you were like, well, I was a bank teller, and you know some people might look at that and be like, well, you were just a bank teller. But it's like, no, like I was a bank teller and I never miscounted a bill. Like that's a like and and, and the manager thought I was great, and now I'm you know you could maybe you get an, an interview to be a, a financial advisor within a branch, and it's it's on your resume that you worked at that bank before. You know, so, so it, it's most people when they if you look at your life to date, you'll probably realize you're more accomplished than you think you are, smarter than you think you are. Um, and that you've probably spent most of your time beating yourself up um, inside your own head when you think about yourself. It's usually not self-kindness. Um, and that's a shame because, yeah, we, sh we should probably all be a little bit more kind to ourselves. Love that. I love it. I can't even summarize all that was said, especially in that last part, because um, I just love it all. And I think um, I know I'll be re-listening to this and um yeah just just so so much uh if we talk to ourselves the way that we would talk to a friend or the way that we would demand you know the you know that our friends speak to us um I think we'd all be a little bit better for it and understanding oh. that if today the definition of success is getting out of bed and tomorrow it's three hours of studying and the next day it's getting yeah. out of bed that's okay and it's all okay um, yep. we're all just doing our best every day. We're not actively and there's trying. There's no one path, right? There's no one path. That's, that's the thing that I took away from Sam over the last few years is like, even if you're like chopping onions with an MBA, which is a friend of mine, he for a little while was chopping onions in a restaurant and yeah. avocados with an MBA making salsa, you know, but like in that moment, he recognized that there weren't going to be enough avocados. <laughs> he started doing variance analysis. <laughs> on boxes it. of avocados and it was by the like, way that is like my um yeah. my go-to when i want to be proficient in something if i can start like nerding out and making little like puns and jokes like yeah. that's that's knowledge mastery is when you can start like joking around in assertions and <laughs> yeah yeah so, it's, it's like, so like, I love you, it. you, you might find yourself you know all kinds of places but it'll like it, they're like, you, you, it doesn't, and I guess I'm getting, you don't really need a CPA. You don't even need, if you don't even really need a degree, although I wouldn't recommend dropping out of school to anybody, but like, you know, if that's what you really want to do and it's the, your definition of success and like, there is no one true path. There are consultants who didn't finish school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do I say this? Um, within your micro successes, the daily successes, I do like, and this, if I'm going to stick anything on there, um, it's never bad to have kind of a, a North star that you're working towards, like where your mini things go to, but don't make that rule everything. Yeah. Like, Cause it, oh, it's going to change so many yeah, times. Point, like, point in a direction. Yeah. Um, or, you know, entertain a couple different things of where you may want to go. And, and when that changes, cool. And when that changes, yeah. cool. Um, and just because you don't hit one mile mark doesn't mean all this was for nothing. No. Um, it'll help you with the next day and the next, you know, bigger thing or the next smaller thing. Um, so I actually really, yeah, I'm going to be sitting with that a lot because I, I always thought about like, you know, pointing into like a general direction and just heading down. But that's also, if I look back, not how I've lived my life. Um, this talk's not about me, so we're not going to go there. But, uh, you know, it's not an either or if you don't want it to be. It's an and, and, and if you want it to be and go out and have some fun. Yep. um because you're and, fucking uh, awesome and you can do it yep and if your north star changes that's okay and sometimes maybe it'll go back to the other one i wanted to be a pilot when i was younger i'm certainly not one now but maybe but i'll you have can, a private maybe buy a plane later yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> buy a plane <laughs> or uh, get a private jet and somebody can pilot your butt around the place. Probably, well yeah it's you know who, who knows what'll happen right over the next 40 years will i do this forever who knows and maybe one day i'm a, uh, you know flying a little Cessna around for who knows, right? Who knows? And that's part of the fun. If anybody told me what my life would look like, 
Um, even if it was, even if it's amazing and it met everything that I could think of right now, which would be my definition of success, I would be bummed because part of it's the struggle, part of it's not knowing, part of it is getting there. And part of it is, um, yeah, just, just, it's so cliche, but it's the journey. Mm -hmm. Bryce, you are amazing. You've talked with me a lot. Of course, of course. Of course, yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, One question to wrap it up. Uh, What's your favorite swear word? Oh, it's definitely the F word, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Just the number of times I've like walked just like the m- number of times when I was like a junior at work and like, you're, you're walking out of the client's building. Like you've, you finished for the day. It's like, it's four 30. They've, they've kind of gone home. You're leaving and you just pack everything up. You walk out the door and you're just like, just happened. Like, cause you're like, I don't know. It's like, what was the, like, what was that person talking about? Like, did you, did you understand any of those words? I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know, like all like that, that I think that's probably the word most commonly uttered by me for my first year of being a, a full-time employee was, I don't know what, what the F I'm doing. I don't know what the F is going on. Someone please save me. Um, <laughs> Someone please save me. But guess yeah. what? You saved yourself. Yeah. Uh, you did it with a smile. You hustled. And now you are, I'm just going to say it, you are an inspiration to me as an educator. You are an inspiration to many. And uh, when I mentioned briefly to a few of my cost students that I was having you on, um, they got really excited and they're like, Bryce, I love that guy. And I was like, <laughs> thanks, Bryce. Thanks for, thanks for saving my booty again. No, I, I appreciate it. I'm Anytime. gonna Part two, I'm sure. Part yeah. two sometime. Okay. I'm okay with that. Yep. Thanks, Bryce. Thank you. See you soon.